gentlemen, uh, we are here this morning to honor uh, Private Frederick Anderson by placing the Medal of Honor that he received uh, for his actions during the Civil War. Uh, the, his family came out from South Dakota about a year ago and uh, presented the medal to the town. Since that time, we've been working on uh, finding a secure place to store it uh, and also have public access. Uh, so this morning, we have three people that are going to have a brief discussion. I'd like to start out, first of all, with Selectman Hall reading a resolution regarding the um, medal of honor. Selectman Hall? Frederick Charles Anderson, a Civil War hero and one of the first ever Medal of Honor recipients, was awarded the Medal of Honor on September 13, 1864 by General George Meade, Commander of the Army of the Potomac, for conspicuous gallantry and good conduct displayed in capturing on the field of battle flags from the enemy and whereas Private Frederick Charles Anderson's family gifted his Medal of Honor to the town of Dyke during a ceremony held on March 30, 2021. And in order to preserve Private Anderson's patriotism and dedication to his country and to share his integral role in the Civil War, and whereas Private Frederick Charles Anderson was laid to rest in the Dighton Unitarian Church Cemetery and the Dighton Board of Selectmen, representing the residents of the town of Dighton, determined that Private Anderson's wartime valor should be honored by presenting his Medal of Honor for public viewing. And now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the town of Dighton, who hereby resolve that Private Frederick Charles Anderson's Medal of Honor shall be on permanent display in the secure case in the lobby of the Dyke Police Station from the 11th day of August 2022 forward. In witness whereof we hereunto set our hands and cause the great seal of the town of Dyke to be affixed on this 27th day of July 2022. The Board of Selectmen, Leonard Hall, Peter D. Karen, and Ken. Jay Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Selectman. Our next speaker will be Mr. Robert Woods, who is going to discuss Mr. Anderson's life prior to entering the Union Army. Fascinating story, Mr. Woods. part of this Medal of Honor ceremony, regardless of Frederick C. Anderson or any other recipient of the Medal of Honor. Um, a brief history on Frederick Anderson. Frederick was born on March 24th, 19, no, 1842 in Boston, Massachusetts. He was orphaned by the age of eight. His parents disappeared from public record, meaning they were more than likely deceased. And he was then living in a workhouse called the House of Industry in the south of Boston. By 14, Frederick was sent out on an orphan train, which sent 
orphan children from cities to more rural, rural areas and put to work. He was selected by a local farmer in Rainham, where he stayed until he was enlisted into the Union Army in 1861. After the war, he ended and the soldiers of the 32nd Massachusetts were mustered out of service, and Frederick settled down in the town of Somerset. He was married to Sarah Francis in 1866. They had three children, and he worked at the Worcester Railroad freight yard in Providence, Rhode Island. Frederick C. Anderson died suddenly at the age of 40 from a stroke, and he was buried in the Dighton Community Cemetery in Dighton, Massachusetts. And that's just a brief history of Mr. Anderson's life, which is very short-lived. Um, and where the connection between Mr. Anderson and the town of Dighton came about was, um, most of you know that I had a barber shop in the town of Dighton. And this gentleman came in, and his name was Fred, I know, Charles Monzago. And he came in and he said that he was looking for a Medal of Honor recipient who he thought was buried in the town of Dighton. And I was the veterans agent at the time. And he wanted to know if I knew where Mr. Anderson was buried. And the only thing I could tell this gentleman was there are 55 cemeteries in the town of Dighton. I believe there's 56 now, but at that time there was 55 cemeteries. So I had no idea where Mr. Anderson was buried. And Dave Marvell was the graves officer at the time. Um, he was just taken over for uh, Mr. Phillips. And neither of those fellows knew where Mr. Anderson was buried either. So this, this gentleman who was in my shop was the nicest man you ever want to meet. He has since passed away. And uh, I became friends with him. Uh, through all this research. And at the time, Mr. Rhines, Timothy Rhines, was in my barber shop when Mr. Morzago came in. And, you know, I told him I was going to do the best I could to try to find this veteran. And Mr. Rhines kept coming in the barber shop every week or two and said, Have you found this guy yet? Have you found this guy yet? And I was like, You know, I have living veterans that I have to take care of as part of my job as the veterans agent. I really didn't have time to search for one man in 55 cemeteries. So I said to Mr. Ryans, I said, you know, you don't have nothing else to do. Why don't you go find him? <laughs> you know? So that's where it really began. Uh, Mr. Ryans was on a mission. He went poking around, looking in cemeteries, asking people, and he asked a gentleman named Mr. Costa, I can't think of his first name. Jack. He was Jack Costa, right? He was in the Lions Club, and he was had something to do with the church. And he says, I think I know where this guy is. And sure as shit, they found him. There he was. He was there all that time. And we never knew it. So, you know, that's how it all became. And then the research started. There was another gentleman named uh, Donald... can't think of his last name. But he is a historian for the Massachusetts um, infantry. And he knew just about every soldier in that unit. He knew the color of their hair, the color of their eyes, where they were born, when they were married, when they deceased. Oh, geez, his last name was... <clears throat> anyway, this is how we found Mr. Anderson. And it was a, it's a remarkable story. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. And we contacted the family, and this is how we ended up with the medal. Um, it was a long, drawn-out process. And in the, in the long run, we gave Mr. Anderson all the respect that he was due. Mm -hmm. And we've done everything possible to honor this medal. And, and, and it's quite moving, really. And I'm honored to be part of it. Um, got a couple more things. <clears throat> I would like to thank everyone for coming today, and I'd like to give a special thank you to the f family of Frederick C. Anderson for donating the medal of honor to the town of Dighton. And I would also like to thank the Medal of Honor Committee, which is Mr. Colonel Perry, Mr. Jim Aguiar, Mr. Thomas Perry, Chief McDonald, our veterans agent, Ray Hague, and our retired veterans agent, Donald Hershey. 
And yourself. I'm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like to thank the Dighton Police Department um, for their escort and all their services. I'd like to thank the Highway Department for all their help in building a proper display case. And I would also like to thank Alice's last, last stop for providing our refreshments today. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. What's wonderful about living in Dighton is if you listen to Mr. Wood's story, how the grave was found, that's the way things happen in small towns when people work together. Um, I want to do, I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can, uh, but I want to set uh, the tone here for a couple of things. Number one, uh, the criteria for the Medal of Honor. And if you listen to the words, they don't sound like much until you listen to the words and really think about what they said. <clears throat> Criteria. This is as, well, Medal of Honor, established by Joint Resolution of Congress, 12 July 1862, and amended three times, is awarded in the name of Congress to a person who, while a member of the armed forces, distinguished himself cons by conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while engaged in action against an enemy of the United States, while engaged in military operations involving conflict with an opposing foreign force, or while serving with friendly foreign uh, forces engaged in an armed conflict against an opposing armed force in which the United States is not a, not a belligerent party. The deed performed must clearly distinguish the individual above his comrades and must have involved risk of life. Think about those words. Involve repeatedly risk of life, risk of life, risk of life. Second thing I want to discuss very briefly you know, today you can pick up a cell phone. You can call anybody in the world within, say, 10 seconds. And we've become accustomed to that. Well, in any contingency operation, such as military, the police, or fire, um, there are three key elements. There's communications, command, and control. Communications being really the key driver of what happens. Okay, we pick up the cell phone today, we pick up a radio, and we call a commander 10 miles away. Do this. Let's roll the clock back 160 years. When battlefield communication consisted of a messenger, a human being, with a piece of paper in his hand, or a message in his brain, or flag bearers standing on the top of a hill with the unit's flag waving it around as however these signals were appropriate to tell that unit in the field, that commander, how to engage his forces opposing the enemy forces. 160 years ago. General George Meade, commander of the Army of the Potomac, presented the Medal of Honor to Private Frederick Anderson on 13 September 1864. According to the records of that event, General Meade noted, quote, at the Battle of Globe Tavern, Private Anderson, in close combat, captured the flag and flag bearer of the 27th South Carolina Infantry Regiment, effectively suspending their ability to communicate with the rest of the Confederate Army. This allowed the Union Army to turn the battle in their favor retaking Walden Road, a typical Confederate infantry regiment had a thousand soldiers. Frederick Anderson took a thousand soldiers out of the battle with his action. And as General Meade noted, it turned the battle in favor of the Union forces. Just think about that. One man's action won a battle. 
This is his citation. The President of the United States of America, in the name of Congress, takes pleasure in presenting the Medal of Honor to Private Frederick Charles Anderson, United States Army, for extraordinary heroism on 21 August, 1864, while serving with Company A, 18th Massachusetts Infantry, in action at Weldon Road, Virginia, for the capture of the battle flag of the 27th South Carolina Regiment, Confederate States of America, and the color bearer. The, I believe General Meade also noted that it was in close, uh, close combat, risk of life, a thousand soldiers out of the battle. The old expression, for want of a nail, a horse was lost, for want of a horse, a rider was lost. We're all familiar with that. Here's a classic example of that right here. One man's actions turning the battle. Detailed and hut. Yeah, what a hug. 